Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, this was a Patreon exclusive that we did last night. Uh, it was very telling information, very disturbing information, and uh, there's a lot that a lot of people need to keep digging into. You know, there's so much information and disinformation, and then much of the true information has been, uh, let's just say, called disinformation. Yeah, it's upside down, it's inside out. This is the world that we live in. Everything that's popular, you really have to take a good look at that and, and question it. It's it's the popularity thing. So with anything that has, you know, a bunch of alphabet letters after it, if it has a lot of views, if, if it just feels popular, you know, you really have to watch that because this is how the controllers slip in their control is through manipulation and unfortunately humans are very vulnerable um, because we want to be understood and we want to understand ourselves and they kind of have the playbook of, of our brain really and they know how it works so we have we can't be um, manipulated uh, more than our brain yeah our very DNA and we know it, it's a fact our DNA is manipulated so here you go. Uh, she's on the phone. Kamala's on the phone with Barry O and Big Mike. And so apparently they are giving her the full endorsement. As you see earlier this week, M Michelle and I call our friend Kamala Harris. We told her we think she'll make a fantastic president of the United States and she has our full support. Uh, ah, yeah, at this critical moment for our country, we're going to do everything we can do to make sure she wins in November. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's interesting to see this. Now, you know, again, there are sources that say she can't really run because of the status of her uh, her parents, you know, and, and not being uh, residents. And yet, you know, Barrio, Kenya, that whole thing, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just simply whatever they want to put out there. Uh, laws are constantly broken or ignored. Uh, you know, it's, it's again, uh, most definitely, uh, you know, do what we say, not what we do type of scenario. It is very much so. And you can see, I mean, someone might pop up and say, well, I'm going to go file some paperwork at nothing the courthouse and nothing ever happens ever 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 i mean they the only reason they pipe up i think is just for for show i mean it really means nothing no you know it's it's the reality you know and yet there's uh, always the hope that something will change but the change won't come from really within the system i, I just don't think it's likely i think you know the change has to come from the end of the system and meanwhile, French high-speed rail network was crippled by massive sabotage. Train lines targeted by multiple malicious acts, including arson, uh, ahead of the opening of the Olympics in Paris. So a group of saboteurs, which again, you know, France is just like the United States. There's so many uh, illegals in the country right now, you can't keep track of everything. But part of uh, the big purpose behind all this is that they want to keep track of everything. They want to keep track of your bank accounts. They want to keep track of, you know, not only where you spend your money, but where you're even thinking of spending your money. Uh, again, it, it, everything is, is to be completely monitored in the system to come. This is what they are really working towards. You know, not that most things are, st are monitored already to such a high degree. So you have multiple um, saboteurs setting fires, stealing cables. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we've seen anything yet, really. When you still look at the situation that there are tens of millions of, of illegals inside NATO countries at this moment, there's still probably a, lo a, a lot of them waiting for cues on when to go and carry out certain... Uh, activities that they knew they were coming in to carry out in the first place. Yes, again, most migrants, immigrants are just uh, people that are caught by circumstance and caught up in a whirlwind, are promised things, and are just looking to better themselves. But again, if it's just 1% to 10%, 
that are coming in with the knowledge that they're actually here to do particular jobs, that's still a huge, huge, massive amount of people waiting uh, to be triggered. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Russian warships are going back to Havana uh, for another port visit this week. By the way, China has a military base in Cuba, which you know has been leaked. China has a, a base in, in the Bahamas, too, in case you hadn't noticed or heard of that. We've talked about that in the past. So, you know, what's happening is NATO encircled Russia and China, and now uh, we are being encircled ourselves. And how will this play out is the question. What scenario? Is it going to be Ezekiel 38 uh, in a biblical sense where, uh, you know, the BRICS nations are going to play uh, the Gog and Magog uh, part? Well, if that's the case, then then they get decimated because of technology which the world hasn't seen yet. So we we have to see, you know, what, how this is going to unfold. And meanwhile, it, the the mud flood, the uh, the wiping away of this particular uh, civilization is underway. And you know, again, it's it's not just the floods; it's the fires too. And so one of our family members lives here, and uh, Zeke from Canada uh, lives up in Jasper. And this this city is a large part of it is is no more. This historic town, massive massive fire, uh, blocks and blocks of buildings destroyed. Uh, the fire was hundreds of feet into the air. Um, some reports are saying the third half. Some some people are saying it's pretty much all gone. Um, I don't know. I think we just reached out to him and see what if we could get his take on what's going on up there. You know, we've seen so many of these. You know, we we have so much to keep up with. You forget what's going on in, say, you know, uh, Maui, or how about you know other areas like Libya where they had that huge flood, the earthquake. Uh, you know, over in Morocco, it, it's just been so many things to keep track of, nonstop. It it really is kind of an Im impossible thing to keep track of, and uh, here we have the park fire now. Well, last night when we made the. Uh, Patreon video was at 70-something thousand acres up to 120,000. Uh, again, arson. This We know this is arson. And what about when all these sleepy cellular units are triggered? Uh, how, how crazy will it get? Here you have a U.S. Senator, Josh Hawley. Let's uh, listen to his words. You know, things are relative. Things are relative. And, and we have to recognize that. Is a rich man's club. That's the In other words, he's saying Congress, in case you missed that first word. Congress, the U.S. Congress, is a rich man's club. Congress is a rich man's club. That's the problem. That's what we're trying to fix. I would suspect that I probably have the fewest assets of anybody sitting on this dais. I'm not a rich man. I'm like... He has $2.7 million. In my mind, he is a rich man. You know, and in fact... But, but look, look at what comes next. It goes to my left. So, I mean, listen. The American... Yeah, 327 million. They, they are insider tr you know, traders. This is the reality. They know everything that... I mean, it, it's betting with house money. They're betting with your money. And they're getting rich. If, you, if we really think that we could take a corrupt system, because this is so corrupt, and it's not just the U.S., it's all the world... Um, but, you know, maybe we are at the pinnacle of, of corruption. Uh, again, it, it just shifts from one spot to another. Same thing with Rome. The decadence that was Rome is the decadence that is the U.S. now. It's just what the system does. Greed corrupts. You know, I, in my mind, nobody in the world needs $327 million. Uh, that's just my mind. I think it's just greed. It's ego. It, it's, it, it really does destroy the soul when you are in, in charge of so much energy that can do so much good. And instead, it, it's being used uh, for dark means. And people still suffer. People still go hungry. St people still go homeless. You know, again, it's that Jesus parable with the rich man's son. You know, hey, I love your teachings. I think you're awesome. 
what should I do? Well, you know, you're a rich brat. You need to sell everything. Give it all away, and then we could talk. Oh, I can't do that. That's the reality. It's the same reality with our, our you know, legal system and our uh, Congress. They're rich, and, and they're corrupted by that. They're not going to give it up. They don't want to really give it up. Mm-mm. No, they don't, and they're going to keep investing in those things that... Uh, make them powerful and we have to remember and turn that around and realize without us they don't have the power we we really have to keep that in mind because it's where do we spend the money where do we put our energy we have more power than we think they do they have a big chunk right now but if we really got serious and got together and we redirected our dollars into stuff that is going to be helpful for humanity, say health. <laughs> health is a big one. You know, if you were to pull the m- money out from underneath the, the health care rug and big pharma, that would be a big, big hit. But people have to want it enough. And I don't know that there's that many of us just yet, but we'll just keep going. So in so many ways, to me, this is the pot calling the kettle black. Um, He's not a rich man. Again, he's wearing a suit that so many people in other parts of this world would never be able to buy in a single lifetime. Uh, When we look at the median household net worth in the the United States is $192,700. Much of that is really based on people's uh, retirements, IRAs, or their Uh, investment in their house, which most people nowadays are having a very hard time trying to even get a house. If you don't have a house by this point in time and you're trying to become a homeowner, quote unquote, which again, we never really own anything because, you know, eminent domain can take it and we're paying taxes on it even after the fact that it's, it's paid off. Then you have, you know, these laws that tax you when say, you know, your parents die and they leave you whatever they had then the government takes you know a portion of that. If you are lucky enough again to uh, have a home and you're able to sell it and you're able to maybe downgrade, you know again you got to pay capital gains after a certain amount of money. It's 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 a slavery system. This is the bottom line. It's a slavery system. Some people do better than others at manipulating the slavery system, uh, but it's a slavery system. We are all still debt slaves. When, you know, you never own anything and it can't be taken from you. I saw we had a house next to us that was taken from a family for $300 in taxes. They couldn't come up with $300. And we were living in the ghetto. You know, this is where we we were uh, previously. And we were in the ghetto. And this family couldn't come up with 300 bucks and the house was taken from them. Uh, this is the reality of the world. People might not think that they're rich. Obviously, Josh Hawley doesn't think he's rich with 2.7 million. But when you look at the amount of people that go to bed hungry or cold or wet or living in moldy places that is pure toxic, no, he is a rich man. And, and this is part of the system. This is a system that's run by rich men and women that think of themselves in totally different terms than the average person. We, we do have power, you know, I just keep circling back and having people realize what they can do. We're not powerless. Yeah, they do hold big chunks, but that's all they have. That's all they have. And without that, they're really not very developed human beings without their dollars. No, you know, and I, I don't know if I it's putting you on the spot. I mean, obviously, he has said more right things than some of the others out there and pointing out some of the faults. Um, Can you see into his energy body at all? Is he well-meaning and just doesn't understand how privileged he is? Emotionally, he's just jealous of the guy sitting next to him. So he's on the same track. I don't think he realizes it. I, I, I think there is a tendency to want to do the right thing there might be something there if something happens in his life he can become something of substance but uh for the most part you know he's just a step away from being like the guy to his left they're really not different energetically 
Yeah, absolutely. It goes back to that. It's easier you know, for a rich man. To, well, it's easier for, to thread a camel through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter heaven in that sense, because there is responsibility when it comes to um, when you have that much energy available, what do you do with it? It is a, a big, big thing. It, it's a big responsibility. And when these people are just basically bettering themselves and they have that need and drive to have more and more and more, um, that's, that's not helping the bigger purpose and things. So here we have a video from San Diego, and this was heading southeast. Um, so, you know, most people say this is probably, if you look at the comments, rocket debris, uh, meteors, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is a second video here, too. It's interesting that uh, a long ways away in Chihuahua, Mexico, there was also very, very similar sightings. And so this one says, I just watched something burn up in the atmosphere, a meteor or something. At first, I thought a plane exploded. Uh, was worried about you know the world ending in this in this world too, with the threat of war always, um, yeah, you know, over us. This is Chihuahua, Mexico, as you see, ba boom. So, is it the same one? I mean, these these are locations that are in my mind just two thousand miles apart. Probably, I, it's is it? Could it possibly be the same thing? Or is I mean, it's kind of in the flight path if it was heading southeast it would have been over san diego first and then here um or maybe a series of things then the other thing that you see is everybody and <laughs> immediately goes to say well it's probably elon you know it's probably you know something to do with starlink is is it is it one of the rockets coming back oh or maybe it's just a bird that ate a jalapeno yeah that could be he's got a little bit of that fiery tush going <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I look at it and I, I keep seeing it's like a, a crash, a very big crash. And it is space junk, but not from anything that we could physically see unless something happens and it gets blown up. And then the ability to camouflage itself is gone. So then you see the debris falling. It could have been something very, very big. And that's just what I what I keep picking up on that. Well, the thing is, too, a lot of times we have this tendency to say, is it is it, you know, human made? Is, is it one of ours? Is it just something that, you know, Earth people made? The reality is Earth people could have made it, but it might not be anything that humans on the surface made. Ah, yes. Or it could be made with uh, help of ETs, too. And not just ETs, inner Earth beings, too. There are inner Earth societies. There's so many legends. Um and myths from all over the world that that point this out so we were exposed to the sun for this says hundreds of thousands of years and doing just fine until sunscreen was invented in 1938 since then melanoma rates began to skyrocket in the 50s yet people blame the sun rather than the toxic chemicals you know when you look at it these things are toxic and you know these are a little bit safer obviously zinc oxide if, if you must put something on but you are in also going to be uh, inhibiting that process which leads to ascension because the Sun is key and it's so weird because the weather here was brutally hot for so long and that's to be expected in the summer uh, in the deep south and you know again then we go to flick a switch, and it's nothing but rain again. Well, as we know, they want to block out the sun because the real controllers are very much like vampires, and they cannot stand the true light of source. Uh, they cannot stand the fact that we're ascending. And it is painful to them because, you know, truly the power structure here on planet Earth really does come from the deep bowels of hell, so to speak, uh, that, that hell is brought to us via Mars. Uh, again, via that uh, invasion of the U uh, of of our world that happened thousands of years ago, and is really it is uh, noted in pretty much every culture around the globe. If you look closely, you will see that they talk about beings coming to the earth from the sky uh, that imposed a new system of governance upon the earth. And the whole monetary concept is one that they brought to us to keep us enslaved. Mm -hmm. It is, and it's really, really sad. And, you know, going back to 
back to the sunscreen, I think everybody should probably have a bottle of zinc oxide in your cupboard. It's so helpful for bee stings. It's so helpful for any kind of rash, for um, just anything that needs to heal a little bit faster. I don't really like neosporin, um, the chemicals in it. I, I use something, either a pulling salve or I use zinc oxide for, for boo-boos around here. The pulling salve works miracles. It really does. You know, so if we ever get a tick on us, which now um, hasn't really happened in, in a long time, uh, and I don't know, I, there is something else that we're doing with the property, and I, I, th I wonder if that's what it is. Uh, but we haven't seen really parasitic bugs really around us lately either. Um, and we'll update you with that info a, a little bit later. Um, it's curious, but this pulling salve is, is pretty amazing because it does pull uh, stuff out, toxins out. Yeah, this is again where, you know, nature is really perfect in so many ways. And it's just a matter of staying in harmony and balance with nature. But nature itself has been under attack. And the system is not uh, at, at all concerned with the well-being of, of nature in general. The system is all about just basically sucking the resources away and then leaving a, a husk in its wake, uh, the husk just like Nibiru and like Mars. This is high-resolution pho photo uh, photogrammy image of the Newark Octagon and Observatory Circle in Newark, Ohio. This circle is approximately 1,050 feet in diameter. Each wall of the octagon represents 585 feet in length. This is part of the massive Newark earthworks built by the Hopewell, they say, 2,000 to 2,400 years ago. There were a people that were in this uh, American, we could call it, land. And that's really fascinating, too, because there are maps that show uh, the word America hidden in other words uh, going back hundreds of years uh, ago. But not exactly uh, the word America. Again, our history, Amerigo Vespucci, Columbus, you know, the pilgrims, all this is really a revisionist history. The fact is, you know, that there were much higher civilizations than we currently are, certainly from a spiritual point of view and understanding how to live constructively with nature in a way in which we benefit nature and nature benefits us and we also had a reverence from the land we don't have any of that in this system the system is dirty and toxic and it is intentionally so it's intentionally so because they're also purposely limiting the health and well-being of not just us but everything else that's on the planet symbiotic you want to be symbiotic wherever you go and you know there's ways to do that and still be comfortable in this world absolutely we don't need to use the the technologies that they're putting out there we don't need to use all the things that supposedly make life easier uh you know technology is supposed to make your life easier it's supposed to give you more time to connect with your loved ones and if you really take a good hard look at it, how much connection do we have? People are just connected to their phones. They don't talk with one another face to face. They don't make time for each other. Um, it, it's just all about the cell phones. It's all about texting. Now, in some ways, that's not completely bad. I'm not saying it's all bad because it does give us connection to people we otherwise would not have connection with. But at the same time, it's brought us this distance, this distance that is seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. So you have to take a look at your life and say, you know, are you really okay with this? Is there something you need to change? I know there's some people that I am in contact with that I absolutely adore and love, and I wouldn't take that back for a second. But I wouldn't want to go deeper into technology and getting, uh, you know, changing things up. Like, I don't want to continue to get a better and better phone. That's I'm trying real hard to hold on to my, my little old 4G here. It's pretty beaten up. But I don't want to go to 5G. I really, really don't. So that's kind of a line that I'm not wanting to cross because I don't think it's necessary. You go to 5G and you start getting connected to all kinds of other weird stuff. 
So, I mean, it, it, it's definitely not easy to stay away from the technology that's supposed to give us more time for each other. But really, underneath it all, it's separating us and it's not giving us that human connection that we once had. So, just something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and many people have even, I've seen it more stated lately that America is the old world in so many ways. I, I think, again, it goes through cycles where one area is hit with that great big redo and then another area is hit with it. Another area comes up. You know, they, they shift population complexes constantly and they they shuffle us around it's like one big game of what was that um that chair game um <laughs> oh, like um, musical, chair musical chairs it's like a one uh, one big game of musical chairs that they play with the population of the earth all the while they are getting rid of uh, bloodlines that are literally indigenous to the earth and replacing it with bloodlines that literally come from uh, the warlike Martian uh, takeover, and it's it might sound crazy to refer to it in this way. Uh, it thinks, makes me think of that Mars attacks. Remember with the little itty bitty ba, you know, guys with the zappers, and they kind of look like skeletal grays and all that. Well, yeah, it, it, it's again the system. It's the draconian system uh, that has laid claim to, to many planets and is still ongoing. In fact, is this war is still ongoing in, in many other locations. Earth is just one tiny little, uh, piece of property out in the boonies, uh, when it comes to the bigger battles that are underway. And yet we are behind enemy lines, so to speak, as this planet has been took over, uh, by a inorganic system. And you, it's so clear to see how, the true earthlings so to speak were living in such harmony you know the, the this is a massive massive earthwork complex you know bigger than four football fields and it, it shows that they paid attention to a lot of things i think when you see so many of these great monolithic works that are paying strong attention to the equinoxes Part of what they're talking about is when the equinoxes first came into being because the earth was totally different when we were outside of the, the Kali Yuga and before the system came into effect. Uh, it was more like an Eden. There was kind of like an eternal spring that was happening. The earth didn't have a 23 and a half degree tilt. Uh, you know, it, it was straight and upright and the moon wasn't there again this is all things that have happened uh in in my opinion probably within the last thirteen thousand uh years or so but that is again subject to debate because time itself is relative it's it's not a constant and and so right away there our whole perspective on things will change when we start to realize that time itself is relative it's not a constant and it's all basically depending on our our, our where we are in the cycle of the yugas mm -hmm. that's what makes it so difficult to really put timelines that we understand on things because time itself is not what we think so uh, anything we're getting from the history books you know we kind of need to look at that eyeball that <laughs> and wonder where are they getting it from Absolutely. You know, there's just so many of these places all around the entire world, all around the world. It, it's just, you know, they they create these wars to wipe away the residue of things that would show us that our history books are, are just full of BS and propaganda. It's all propaganda, and it's pretty easy to see, too, now that people are awakening and, and starting to uh, push the Kool-Aid away from them a little bit instead of sucking it down, that th those things that are debunked, some of the strongest uh, efforts to debunk certain things, uh, will generally give us a clue as to what, what is the real reality here. Indeed, and these guys are having a whole lot of fun in their reality. They're getting together, they're playing, and they're doing this thing called jumping fun they're going to do it all day long they're so cute absolutely as always look forward to your comments source bless and namaste namaste